And talking of leave, the great resignation seems to have hit some of our leaders, and they all happen to be women. Coincidence or not, the question we are asking is this. Why are women in power quitting their jobs? Just this week, two high-profile women have stepped down. Yesterday, YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki quit her job. A day before, Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon resigned. In January, New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern resigned. Last year, Meta's COO Sheryl Sandberg stepped down. So why are women, when it comes to top jobs, leaning out instead of leaning in? Because if you're a woman who has achieved professional success, then you know just how hard it is to get a seat at that table. So why are so many voluntarily getting up from it? Let's talk about the politicians. Nicola Sturgeon has been the longest serving first minister of Scotland. The first minister is the head of the Scottish government. Her resignation came as a shock to many. Since my very first moments in the job, I have believed that part of serving well would be to know almost instinctively when the time is right to make way for someone else. And when that time came, to have the courage to do so, even if to many across the country and in my party, it might feel too soon. In my head and in my heart, I know that time is now. Sturgeon knows a thing or two about breaking the glass ceiling. But while announcing her decision, she spoke about the pressures of the job and how brutal it can be and how she is a human after all. Which may sound familiar because you heard the same last month. I think the cumulative uh, challenges that we've faced as a team, and they have been extraordinary, has taken its toll. Uh, I consider this job a privilege, but I am also human. Both Ardern and Sturgeon were popular leaders, till they weren't. They remain social media darlings, especially Arden. She was handsomely praised for making history at the United Nations, for being Me the first too. world leader to attend the UN General Assembly meeting with her baby in tow. But that was then. Recent reports say their ratings were dipping and their policies were being questioned. Arden faced criticism over the COVID response and the economy. Sturgeon faced flack over her stand on Scottish independence and gender reforms. So they were under pressure. But my question is, which head of state is not? Just ask Joe Biden, Xi Jinping, Shehbaz Sharif, Vladimir Putin, Volodymyr Zelensky, or anyone else you can think of. These are world leaders with the most problems right now. Look at Biden. He faces an election next year. His cup of woes is overflowing, both at home and abroad. Economy, China, the Russia-Ukraine war, North Korea. You name the problem and he has it. But this 80-year-old is not ready to quit Far from it. He is, in fact, ready to run for re-election. His tank, unlike 42-year-old Arden's, is far from empty, or so he claims. Shehbaz Sharif's country, Pakistan, is on the verge of bankruptcy. Zelensky is on the verge of a meltdown over lack of fighter jets from the West. Xi Jinping is dealing with balloons and viruses and everything in between. And Putin started a war he has not been able to win yet. Different leaders, different problems. But no one is quitting. So while some are praising Arden and Sturgeon for being true to themselves and knowing when to, step, when to stop, others are talking about the message it sends, especially to young girls who look up to these leaders as role models. I know what I'm saying is politically incorrect, but someone has to say it, I think. When the pressure builds, it's quitting the answer. Remember the saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. There is no denying that women in positions of power have an additional burden, the burden to constantly prove that they can do it all. You're expected to look like a girl, act like a lady, think like a man, and work like a boss. It's not easy, but no one said it was. And giving up is definitely not the solution. It's not like it can't be done, because so many others are doing it, have done it in the past. In fact, when it comes to women leaders who have per persevered, the subcontinent can teach a thing or two to the so-called first world from India's Indira Gandhi to Pakistan's Benazir Bhutto to Bangladesh's Sheikh Hasina, and England's very own Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher. Let me tell you what she famously said once. If you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. Save that, I say. And think about this. Is there any virtue in giving up? The road to the boardroom or the parliament is not an easy one. It was never supposed to be, neither for men nor for women. 
but times have changed. Women are breaking barriers and ceilings everywhere. And while it's no longer acceptable, and rightly so, to say that boys don't cry, we also believe that girls don't quit. So when you get a seat at the table, stay put. <laughs>